This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. Back out to Greasel. The fake, the drive, the kick. Vandemel's three. Got it! Another three ball by Vandemel. He's got two of those puppies this afternoon. Another CBA three. Huge goal. The kick out. Jenkins touch pass. Morton. Three ball. No. Into the hands of Gary. Down the floor to Tomaga. Tomanaga puts it up. Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it! We got a four-point game! Holy smokes! KC Tomanaga with 12.07 to go. Greasel to Walker. Squares. Edie is on him. Cuts across the key. Backs him in. Throws one up. And got it with a left hand. That's that hook from waist high level. Greasel on the right sideline. Starts in. Cut off. Tomanaga. Three ball on the way. this puppy at 56. Tomanaga with eight on the shot clock over to Wiltshire. Seven high post. It's Walker. Drives in on Edie again. Throws it up. And in! The first lead of the game! Derek Walker gives Nebraska a 58-57 lead. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome to our weekly sit-down with the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Fred Oyberg. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. Huskers set to play the Ohio State Buckeyes Wednesday night at PBA. That'll be a 6 o'clock tip. Our pregame coverage begins here on the I work at 5 o'clock. I'm hoping you've got some good news out of the MASH unit. What's, what's it like because you were down two starters in that game on Friday? Yeah, uh, Sam went through about half practice today and had no setbacks. He felt really good um, during practice, felt good after practice. He'll get another treatment in the morning. We're going to go at about noon tomorrow and hopefully get him through the entire practice and then make the decision depending on how he feels uh, the day of the game against Ohio State. Uh, Jawan's going to be out for a while, unfortunately, and you, you just see how important he is to our team. And you lose those two guys guys at Purdue who one of their I mean obviously they've got strengths across the board but one of the best things they do is rebound the ball and you saw with two of our better rebounders out of the lineup just the impact that that had uh, overall on our team so I was proud of the effort I thought our guys really battled and going back and watching film we did a great job in the game plan with Edie. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer got hot on us. And, you know, early we, we helped off strong corner, which he can't do. And then he had a couple sidestep relocate threes and a couple contested mid-range shots. Uh, but overall, um, you know, I thought we defended them well. It was just the, the offensive rebounds that really hurt us. Uh, but, again, they're number one in the nation uh, in that category, and, and being down those two guys really hurt. Toughest toughest place to play in the league or one? I mean, there's so many good ones, but... There's a, yeah, a lot of great ones, but yeah, there's no doubt about it. That That's the loudest, and maybe as loud as any I've played in, and you know, this goes back to Allen Fieldhouse, right. and I think we've talked about this, Gallagher Iba, before they put the addition on, to me, was as loud as anything that I have ever experienced, uh, but yeah, Purdue, it, it, you go in there, and we had our little, sh- uh, had our shoot-around time, and you bounce the ball, and it sounds like a chirp, because the, the echo bounces off the ceiling and it's it's really it's a cool place and they're so engaged start yep. to finish and you know when a call goes against them, the boot you know it just it just radiates yeah. off that ceiling that you know when the call does go against them which doesn't happen very often in that building but you know it's it's a great it's a great place a great venue and obviously they've got an unbelievable team that's got a chance to win a championship this year so without two starters, you had to go. Denham had to get in there a lot more. Wilhelm, Wilhelm had really been giving you some good minutes with the offensive side of the ball. He didn't, he didn't shoot the ball real well Friday night. Yeah, we stro- You know, early on, it, we we miss a point blank layup, and then we miss an uh, an, an open three, and uh, you know, you just have to finish those. You got to find a way uh, to get off to a good start in that building, and it, it was ten to two as opposed to you know ten to seven or eight. And, uh, you know, it's just it's tough to get those back when you get those kind of opportunities. You, you just have to convert when you get those. And, uh, you know, we missed – if we make our layups, you know, we, we shoot, I think, when I went back and looked at it, we shoot almost 50% if we make our open layups. And, you know, you just can't – miss those you're going to have nights where you don't uh, make shots from the three-point line obviously we've struggled in that area in a big way this year but when you have chances at the rim you have to take advantage and finish those and uh, you know again when you miss those they go down on the other end and they hit a two or a three it's a four or five point swing and and again in that building in that environment it's tough to make up for that Derek had a nice bounce back game 
He did, yeah. Derek struggled in the game against Illinois, yeah. and you know, unfortunately, he got that that uh, call. Uh, you know, in the second one, where you know there was no contact, and that sits him for 15 minutes. And he's coming off a career night against Minnesota, where he had 22, eight, and seven. And you know, our, one of our most important guys has to sit on the bench with that kind of call, which is just you know, it's it's. I, I talked about this the other day. I'm not going to harp on it, but you know, it's it's not right when you have to have a guy like that. Th that importance sits down, and then Emmanuel gets two, and then Wilhelm. We put him back in, and he got three. Uh, so it was good to see Derek bounce back. And you know, when we play through Derek, when we play what we call the get game and cut off of him, good things happen. Whether he gets a cutter or he goes into a little isolation mode, whether he's at the elbow or at the nail. Uh, but good things happen when the ball's in his hands. It's one of the age-old debates, Coach, in college basketball, is what to do with after that second foul. Do you risk it and play him? Do you sit him till the second half? Where do you come down on all that? It's really by feel. And I, I felt if it would have, we were in striking distance. It was an 11 point game at halftime. And you saw we came out early in the second, got three got straight baskets. Yeah. And a lot of that was through Derek. And if he picks up a third, then you probably don't start Derek in the second half. So uh, I, if it would have got to 15, yeah, absolutely. We put him back in. And then you just take your chances and throw it out there. Uh, Wilhelm, like, who, like you said, has been playing better, is playing with more confidence. We did go with him, and unfortunately, he picked up that third one pretty quickly. Blaze is still battling an ankle. He, he's not 100, not even close to 100 percent right now. And you know, I think you've seen some of that. I thought Oleg gave us some nice minutes uh, the other day against mm -hmm. Purdue as well. But we're just not the same team. You've seen that with Derek out of the lineup, and again, you saw that we cut it to five right away. Where it's two possession game uh, with Derek back in there. But it, it is. It's I've played guys with two. Uh, you get burned sometimes. Sometimes they go through the rest of the half. Uh, without picking up that third, but we just felt we were, we still were there in striking distance. We felt we could get to halftime, uh, make some adjustments, go out there and make a run, and that's exactly what happened. Thought you might get more than you did out of Blaze Friday night, but that ankle obviously just is not responding to treatment. Yeah, and, and, and he's a guy that needs reps. You know, there's some guys that can sit out for a week and they throw him back in the lineup and they don't skip a beat. But a guy like Blaze, he needs to feel it. He needs to get up and down for timing and that kind of thing. And, you know, when you have a high ankle sprain like he has, he had a really good practice today. And hopefully that will carry over into the game. Zed Key is a tough <laughs> physical player. So it'd be nice to have Blaze and his body down there for this game but you know again he's he's trying to fight through it I, I give him a lot of credit uh, for going out there and, and, and giving it giving it a chance but you know it just uh, he needs those reps and he, he missed quite a bit of time uh, when he had that high ankle sprain What'd you make of Casey's performance? Yeah, it was good to see Casey get it going. I thought his pace coming off the screens was really good. Uh, hit Derek in the pocket on a couple of occasions. I think it was three straight where Casey came off, hit a shot. Next one he hit Derek, and then the next one it was Derek, and Derek made the extra pass to Emmanuel, who hit a three. And it was good to see Emmanuel knock down a couple threes as well to hopefully give him a little bit of confidence. So it's just, um, you know, Casey, it, very important uh, part of this team, especially when he's knocking out shots. Check out the Husker Extra mobile app from the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the App Store for Husker Extra and download today. Purdue played today. Great game with Michigan State. It was at the Breslin Center, another great venue for college basketball. And I was asking this before we started the show. Tom Izzo opted not to double Edie. He goes off for 32. I guess it's kind of pick your poison what you want to do. Well, and you look at our situation, again, you see the importance of Derek. We have to protect him out there. So that's why you see a lot of times what we do with the double teams. And we're doing a little bit different this year, coming from the baseline side. And it's been fairly effective. And I think we've held Edie to two of his lowest point totals this year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, uh, like I said, unfortunately, they got it going from the three point line. But, you know, if Derek picks up two fouls trying to guard one on one, the thing about Michigan State, they got Soko, and then they got the two uh, younger players that can go out and then throw bodies at them and fouls. Uh, we just don't have that luxury, so that's why uh, you know we opted to play that way. Good news, you don't play them again. <laughs> that, is that is good news. Are they a Final Four type oh, team? Oh, in your absolutely. Eyes? Yeah, I mean, you just look at what they do with Edie, who's the most dominant force in our game right now, and then they've got shooting all around him. So they're 100 percent is a team that is built. Uh, for a long run in March, and you know it, it just it, it, the, the, what would have happened to close that one out. You know just how 
big of a week that would have been for us, knocking off Creighton. Uh, you go to Indiana, you lose yeah. Sam in that game, um, you know, with, with Indiana at full strength. And then you play Purdue and you find a way, you know, to close that one out. Unfortunately, we just couldn't do it. But, you know, we are. We're done with, with the best team in our league right now. We've got, got the two games out of the way with them. Uh, we played a lot of road games. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll catch up at some point. I think we get three in a row at home in February. So we just got to keep going out and battling. Uh, you know, got a big one on Wednesday night against a very talented team, um, you know, that's got as good a freshman in the league in Sensabaugh. But uh, you just got to go out there and battle and, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, compete and give ourselves a chance. Where, where is the mental spirit of this team right now? Yeah, our guys are resilient. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's been, like I've said this all along, it's been a fun group to be around because, you know, they don't get too high, they don't get too low, and it, it's what you have to have. You have to have that mentality if you want to go out and compete, uh, you know, after wins, after losses, and we've responded pretty well, um, you know, after we've, we've had tough defeats. So hopefully get at least Sam back on Wednesday and, you know, continue to get the guys that have had uh, opportunities and get more experience and go out there and battle, like I said, a very talented team. But, um, you know, it's, you look at this league. This league is crazy right now with all the one-possession games and overtime games. Uh, you saw it today, as you mentioned, with Purdue uh, winning by one at the Breslin Center and Malik Hall now out of the lineup. Uh, you know, Iowa's wins. They, you know, were dead in the water against Indiana, came back, won that one in a close one, and then ends up beating Michigan in overtime, being down four with about 15 seconds left. So, um, you know, it's just it's a crazy league. Ohio State's losses have been overtime or one possession, and you know, we know they're going to come in hungry on Wednesday night. So it's going to be physical. It's going to be a battle. But, you know, I think our guys will respond. First Interstate Bank, build for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Dot com member FDIC. Coach with us until the top of the hour, 402-413-2400. You can give us a call or fire off a text. We've got more coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Moriarty gets it. Two seconds. One second. Throws a flip up oh! and it goes in! It goes in! You! Betcha. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the miracle shot of all time. <laughs> Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the women's side takes on Purdue with pre-game coverage starting at 5.45 p.m. with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. 
We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Your stories are all around you and in the Lincoln Journal stars where they come to life. Go to lincolnjournalstar.com slash story. Subscribe today and read on any digital device. Welcome back. It's our men's basketball show for the week. The head coach with us for a little while longer, 402-413-2400. We are going to hear later in the hour from Jamarcus Lawrence, who has played some good basketball. I'll get some thoughts about him from you here in a moment, but we do have a text question. Coach, how would you evaluate the play of CJ over the last couple games? Yeah, CJ, you know, he obviously had some struggles uh, in the last game. We still feel really good about CJ shooting the ball. He and I had a good meeting yesterday and sat in my office and watched uh, some shots from the Indiana game where he had a career high and came off really aggressive when they were going under. And when they chased him, he did a good job cutting and getting to the basket. That's been one area I've been really pleased with CJ is uh, his cutting off of Derek. And, you know, obviously he missed the easy one last game, but he's done a nice job because uh, he's getting chased all over the place. Teams are really trying to take away his three, and he's done a good job cutting and getting to the basket. Uh, another thing I t we talked about last year, he shot 33% from three before the new year. After the new year, he shot almost 48% from three. So there's still time. Um, you know, we worked on some things on trying to do, his, uh, do everything he can to get open, getting into the bodies, try to loosen teams up a little bit. Uh, and for him, you know, as I talked about, I had plenty of years where I had struggles. Is all it takes is one game to see that ball go through the hoop, and, and that's all it takes to get some confidence going. So, um, you know, proud of him. I think he's taken a big step in the right direction defensively. He's, he's been doing a good job being in the right spots. Uh, and offensively, he's just too good a shooter for the slump to last. So he'll get it going. And again, uh, his cutting and getting to the basket has gotten us some easy, um, easy opportunities at the rim. In the Illinois game, he got some shots at the rim. Can that even help you just to see it go through the hoop? 100%. That and getting to the free throw line, you know, making a free throw. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, the importance that first cut he had was great. You know, he just, as 
the game of basketball, sometimes it happens. Uh, you know, he missed an easy one at the rim, and if that goes in, maybe he makes that three on the next possession where Emmanuel had a great find to him in transition. That's something else we have to do. We talked about that in our film session today, is find our shooters in transition when you draw a crowd. And Derek got a great um, open look to Kese in the second half on the right wing, uh, you know, coming down to transition. And that's where Derek is elite. You know, he's so good at getting there. And, you know, at times he gets to the rim. He had one where he tried to go through three guys where he had Kese coming down as the trail. And the next time he found him over there in the wing. So, you know, it'd be nice to get CJ, uh, you know, some more open looks. And again, you look at Illinois, for example. They held Michigan State without a three. It's what their defense does. They drop uh, danger in the paint, and then they just chase everything and try to chase and funnel everything to the big guy. Um, you know, so that is what that defense is designed to do. CJ got four baskets in the paint uh, on good cutting. So again, I you know I feel good uh, still about CJ. We had a really good one-on-one -on -one session today, shooting the ball. We'll get another one tomorrow, and then it's just a matter of time before he gets uh, gets it going. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorability. It's 402 413 2400, the number if you want to call us or fire off a text here with the coach. Derek Walker made a three the other night. Yeah. Is that the first of the year for him? I think the first of his career. And yeah, it was, it was good to see. He's worked hard. I mean, he, he, he said what, that was one of the things coming back in the summer that he really wanted to work on was his three. And he found himself out there. They weren't guarding him and stepped up without hesitation. And it was good to see him knock that down. Emmanuel, I know you'd like to see him splash a few. He was a really high percentage three-point shooter at SMU a year ago. It hasn't been this year, and obviously the Big Ten does play a lot of defense. Where do you assess where he is right now? Yeah, it was good to see him. Uh, he was two for four in the last game. It was good to see him uh, take the lid off. And, you know, another guy every day would do a 100-shot drill, three-pointers, just different areas that within our system that could create some shot opportunities. And he's in there every day uh, doing that Husker 100 drill. And uh, he, had, he had a day last week, he made 82. I know that doesn't mean anything. you got to make him. Uh, when the lights are on, and you know, it was good to see him knock a couple down in the last game. And, and again, those are confidence-building type situations. Is when you see that ball go in the basket. So you know, hopefully, he continues to go out there, uh, shoot with confidence. But he has been over the course of his career a 35 and 37 percent three-point shooter his last couple years, and hopefully, he takes off here this, these last couple months. I asked Mark Manning this the other night, Coach. I'm going to ask you the same thing. School doesn't start again for another week. Yeah. It's been a long, long break. <laughs> it is a long break. Good or bad? I mean, you, you, all coaches kind of like structure. Yeah. You know, you got them on the. What, what's it been like? This is a maybe the longest break I ever remember. I know. Yeah, and you know, every arena we played in, their students are back, but ours aren't going to be back <laughs> for this next one. It has been. It's this is the longest break I certainly can remember of any year I've been in coaching. You know, we we keep our guys. They they're actually all I think almost all not every one of them, but they're all in a mini class. Uh, where they're taking now. So there's, we're still have them in structure where we get them in, uh, have a practice. They all go over to the study table after that. We're able to feed them. We're going to have a team meal tomorrow night, uh, get everybody together. Uh, but this is, this is a very long break. I mean, uh, that sounds ideal for a college student, but in some ways you, you want them out of bed and doing their normal, because you normally practice in the morning, don't you? We do, and we're still practicing in the morning. It's just not quite as early. So for our players, gotcha. they, they love it. I mean, normally they're in there at 8 in the morning uh, practicing. We push that back to 10 or 11, and like I said, tomorrow they'll get in. Uh, we'll have a film session at 11. They'll get a lift uh, for about 45 minutes after, and we'll start our actual practice at noon. All right. Um, Ohio State's going to be here on Wednesday night. They have lost some close games. But there's a lot of talent on that basketball team. And they've got a different look a little bit to them this year. There's some new names. You mentioned Sensaba. He's one of the better names, better, better young players in his league. Yeah, he, he's really impressive in his body. I mean, he, he's just he's built. And, you know, not many freshmen come in with a Big Ten ready body. But he is really thick and athletic in shooting 46% from the three-point line. I think 48% in league. They're shooting over 43% as a team in league games. Uh, you, know, you know how hard it is to play at the rack up in, um, in New Jersey against Rutgers and you know they had a tough loss in overtime they had a shot sense about had a shot to win it uh, after making a pull up the, the, the play before uh, but their freshmen are really good they, they, they all across the board have great size uh, suing uh, you know in the lineup a lefty uh, it's got a really nice mid-range touch and then like you said key is a guy they play through on the block and, and he can score in a variety of ways Check out the Husker Extra mobile app from the team at the Lincoln Journal Starts, the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the App Store for Husker Extra and download today. Still no students here Wednesday, 
but you need the folks to be loud and out there. And they've, they've been good most of this break, even though you've had a, only a handful of games. I, the folks still coming are coming out and helping. Yeah, they, they've been awesome. And, you know, we're re very thankful for the support that we're getting with this team. And, you know, the Iowa game, yeah, I think a couple of years ago when the students were gone for the Iowa game, my first year actually, when, when we, uh, I think we beat them at home yep. that game, but the whole student section was Iowa fans. <laughs> they scooped up all those tickets. But this year, you know, it was pretty much all red in there. And, yeah, they were they were phenomenal uh, in that game. The other night against Illinois was was a great crowd, especially when we made that run uh, to start the second half. And you know when we kind of kept going there as the game went on, made a nice run uh, to cut it back to ten, I think, after falling down eighteen. And uh, you know unfortunately just couldn't uh, sustain that. But you know we we appreciate it. We appreciate all the support. I know they're going to be out on uh, on Wednesday night. Barring the weather, we may have some weather coming. Yeah, through. I heard that. Kind of due for we a are little bit, due. Yeah, little snow. Yeah. Hey, buckle up, folks. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. One more segment with a coach. 402-413-2400. Back with more next. Here's Walker. They clear that left side for him. Backdoor cut, reverse layup, up and good, and one. Oh, what a find by Walker. Oh, what a finish by Vandemel. It was knocked to a, on the floor on his butt. And the Huskers are up by 271 to 69. Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the men's side take on Ohio State with pregame coverage beginning at 5 p.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hannah Fahm with Campus News. Students in Nebraska's Rake School of Computer Science and Management created software that is saving a Nebraska e-commerce company 34,000 hours of work per year. Created by a group of five Rake School students for their Design Studio Capstone project, this software is one of 300 real-world software solutions created by Rake School students. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Your story, it lives in the capital city, where we take Nebraska nice to another level, and we always show up for Go Big Red. In your story, a pioneering spirit has built a community that cares. Your story is the story of Lincoln, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's breaking news from the capital or sending you to the best shows in town, and here in the Lincoln Journal Star is where it comes to life. Lincoln Journal Star, where your story lives. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, 
Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan. Together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance. Employee benefits. Financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports, along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Head coach with us for a few more minutes, 402-413-2400. Appreciate you coming in on a holiday, Martin Luther King Day. Do you have a chance to talk to your guys about the, the, the daunting shadow that that man Put over our society. Yeah, we, we did talk about it today, and, and Coach uh, Coach Ziegler uh, spoke to the team just about everything that Dr. King has meant to our country. And uh, you know, I talked about the time that when I was in Chicago coaching, we had a day off, and we took the team uh, to the Martin Luther King uh, Memorial, and very powerful. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just it's something that you know was was great to take our team uh, there to see and. Uh, you know, just talk about all the good that that man uh, tried to provide, you know, as far as equality in our country. And, uh, you know, still obviously a long ways to go with that. Uh, but, you know, Ernie was phenomenal today, uh, you know, talking to our team just about everything that he went through and lived through in, uh, in his life growing up and, you know, everything that Dr. King meant uh, to him and his family. There's a couple of Big Ten games today, and they, a lot of them are wearing warm-ups and shirts to commemorate the, the, the celebration today. You didn't play, obviously, today. Will you do anything on Wednesday night? Or yeah, our you... guys will wear the, they'll wear the shirts okay. as well. Yep. And, you know, I was fortunate when I was coaching in the NBA to play on Martin Luther King Day on a couple of, mat a couple of matinee games. We played at Detroit one year and when we played at home one year, and it's pretty cool to be a part of that. We've got a, a Jessica's got an interview coming up in the next segment with Jamarcus, who I really think's Growing and gaining confidence. What talk about this young freshman? Yeah, I, I, he's he's got a heck of a future in front of him. And he, the thing that I'm most been most impressed with Jamarcus is how quickly he has picked up the defensive side of the ball. It is such a different system than anything you go through in high school when you make the jump to the next level, especially when you're going to the high major um, basketball. And he's he's really picked things up. He stays in front of the ball. He guards the bounce. He can play uh, some point guard. He plays both guard positions. And the thing that he can do is give Emmanuel a little bit of a break, breather on the ball because of his ability to get up and pressure um, uh, the, the, the ball handler. So I've, I've just, he's, he's a really good shooter. He, he's a guy that will make a lot of shots in a Husker uniform. Uh, but yeah, and the thing that you'll hear here in a couple minutes with him, with Jessica, is just how great of a kid he is. He's a wonderful kid and he's a sponge. He watches a ton of film. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's really easy to root for because he puts a lot of time into it. He opted to go ahead and play this year. Ramel Lloyd opted to go ahead and do the redshirt route. Update us on him. Yeah, Ramel's having a, a really good redshirt season, and we always try to make him the focal point on the scout team. And the thing you do when, when you participate in that 
um, you know, with that role is you learn the league and you run every team's system and you're out there. Some days he plays the point, other days he plays on the ball, some days he plays the four. And it, it just, it's teaching him a lot about what he will have to do to adjust to get into the lineup next year. But I've been really pleased with Ramel. A shot is, is really coming along. Uh, he had a great day today, um, you know, uh, uh, playing in, in sense of his role, um, you know, with the number 10 jersey on. But yeah, he's, 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 I, I'm really, really pleased with both our freshmen. Jamarcus has been patient. He was, you know, in and out of the lineup a little bit, uh, but he's shown that he belongs in there. And Ramel, again, size. Uh, length, ability to play uh, anywhere on the floor and score it all over. So I'm, I'm really excited about our freshman. Another guard that you haven't had all year because of an injury is McPherson. How, how is his rehab going? Is he on track? Where, where is he in the progress? Yeah, he's coming along, and he's spent a ton of time with Kurt Joseph, our strength coach, and he, his, his knee feels really good. It's just part of the process right now uh, as far as strengthening it and getting back the confidence to where he can go back out there and do full speed reps. But he's, he's doing everything that he's supposed to do, and he's right on track. That would have been... That would be giving you some help with that point guard spot because Sam's missed two league games. That would have been a, a point guard for you. Yeah, it just takes away depth. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. And, and he's a tough, really tough kid. And you just, uh, you, unfortunately, uh, you know, these things happen. And, uh, you know, the setback with uh, Q after sitting out last year, it, it's tough blow. It's hard mentally on the kid. When you sit out, you expect to be back and be a contributor, and then you have the setback again. But he's kept a positive mindset and attitude throughout the whole thing. Very good. All right, Buckeyes wins at Penn State Saturday. We haven't seen the Nittany Lions. They've had some impressive games. Yeah, they're, they're really good. They had a game last week where they made 18 threes oh. in a game against Indiana. So it, it's a team that could really score the basketball. Pickett's one of the best overall guards uh, in the country, and he's got great strength and can really post um, you know, on the block. But, yeah, he, he's, he's a very versatile guard that gets everybody involved. Never, never an easy week in this league. No, there's not. Is there? Yeah, it's not. It's not fun. <laughs> it just keeps coming at you and coming at you. Uh, the, uh, we talked about Emmanuel earlier, and you 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 feel good about Sam on the track, getting back and ready to play on. Wednesday. Yeah, Sam's. He's he had a good day today, and uh, you know the the thing that he had is just you know the, with the hip flexor, it's always a little bit of a concern. So uh, you know once we figured out exactly what it was, he had really good days of treatment. Sam's in here you know, two, three times a day getting treatment on that thing. It has nothing to do with the previous hip injury, which was a huge relief to all of us. Uh, but he hopefully will be back in the lineup and then, you know, be back in there for the long term. He was on the floor a lot in the Illinois game. Is yes. that what it happened? Yes, yes, he was on the floor a lot. And, you know, that's the thing you get out of Sam. He, today he was back in the, uh, on the practice court, and he was, first possession he was in there, he dove on the floor again. I said, Sam, let's maybe save those, <laughs> let's save those for the game. But that's who he is. That's how he's wired, and it's what makes him special. How would you feel like Denim? did getting the, getting the nod to start yeah you know Denim he's going to go out there he's, he's going to give you a great effort on the defensive end and you know that's that's what Denim does he had a good look from three I thought it was a good stroke uh, unfortunately it just didn't go down but you're always going to get great effort from Denim um, you know we talked about some things to, uh, today on the offensive end of the floor where we really feel he can help us getting some rebounds and extra opportunities for us which he did a really good job of in the early portion of the season but the thing about Denim I know he's going to go out there and compete I know he's going to play hard and he's going to give you a good effort in the defensive end. Can he be more effective taking the ball to the basket maybe than he has been and once he figures that part of it out? Yeah, I mean, he, he had a good drive to the basket in the last game. Yeah. I thought he missed CJ on a pull behind and unfortunately slid his pivot foot. So, uh, you know, driving in there again in this league with at this level with too. a 7-4 guy, he did a good job. He drew the defense, had three guys around him. Now it's just coming in there under control with a good jump stop, playing off two feet and making the right play. But, yeah, Denham's very athletic. He Hopefully we can get out and transition a little bit uh, in you know, what Denham always does is give you, a, uh, like I said, a good effort defensively where he, he creates a lot of deflections. Well, keep this group healthy, would you? We're trying. We're trying, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> when you walk out there against the number three team in the country and don't have two starters, that's, yeah. that's a tough, yeah. tough night. It is. It is. But, you know, again, our guys compete. That's what, that's yeah. what I love about them. Every time they step on the floor, they're going to battle. And we need, we need to fix, when you look at our numbers, when we've had our wins, we've won the battle of the boards. When we've lost, we've, we've lost that uh, category in a big way. So we just have to go out there, compete on the glass. Ohio State is another top 10 team as far as offensive rebound percentage. And if we can take care of the glass, we'll have a chance.
chance. Very good. All right. Good luck on okay, Wednesday. Thank you. Fred Hoiberg with us here on our men's basketball show for the week. Our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Jessica will join me next. We'll hear from Jamarcus Lawrence. That's coming up. Nebraska women's basketball offers one of the best values in all of Husker sports with single game reserve tickets at Pinnacle Bank Arena for just $15. Adult general admission seating is just $10, while youth and senior general admission tickets are $5. Children six and under are just a buck. Plans now to bring your whole family to Husker women's basketball for Big Ten home games in January and February. Get your tickets and the full schedule at Huskers.com. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Woodhouse Nissan makes car buying easy, enjoyable, and stress-free. We will bring the dealership to your driveway with Nissan at home. You can shop, drive, and buy a new or pre-owned Nissan all from the comfort of your own home. Explore every aspect of the purchasing process at your pace and convenience. Get real pricing on your vehicle of choice, review lease and financing options, and complete a credit application. Get to your next adventure faster with Woodhouse Nissan. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to, is you. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Your stories are all around you and in the Lincoln Journal Star is where they come to life. Go to lincolnjournalstar.com slash story. Subscribe today and read on any digital device. It's our men's basketball show for the week. Jessica Cuddy joins me now. As I told the coach as he exited, it's hard to win in this league when you have two starters that aren't in uniform. That is, that is a, particularly when you're playing the number three team in the country in their house, that's a tough, tough chore. And two starters, one of those being Sam Griesel, your point guard, and the other one uh, being Juwan Gary, who leads the way on the boards and does so many things sets the tone, is a physical guy in this league. You need that guy, and he kind of is, is the enforcer a little bit, is not afraid to, to get physical. And so, yeah, those are two, two starters, two monumental pieces of this basketball team that, that you're out trying to battle. But, you know, give the guys credit. I thought they fought pretty hard, and I thought, you know, as tough as it is to play there and as tough as Purdue is, that, you know, there were some, some good things to take away from that. Next time I see Sam, I'm going to kid him that he doesn't want to play in Indiana because <laughs> he missed the Indiana game on the road and then he missed the Purdue game. So obviously he doesn't want to play in that state of Indiana. So I mean, apparently. I'll give him some, some trouble. <laughs> he looked good. I mean, he was out there doing a uh, practice today a little bit and then was doing yoga. Yeah. The team does yoga, so he was out there. So hopefully um, hopefully he'll be good to go. Going to need him on Wednesday against Ohio State. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Well, one guy who got some more minutes was Jamarcus Lawrence because of Sam's absence. Jamarcus ended up playing nearly 22 minutes against the Boilers, made some shots, ended up with six points. 
You had a chance to catch up with him earlier today. I did. Chatted with him after practice. And, um, you know, really, really, really nice, smart, young kid. He's going to be a, a fan favorite down here for a while because he can do so many different things. And, and we've seen him knock down big shots. And obviously, how much have we heard him be bragged upon by his efforts on the defensive end for just a freshman? So here is Jamarcus McF or McFarland, J Jamarcus Lawrence after practice today. Well, I know coming off a, a tough loss, you guys were a little bit short-handed, but um, how did this team respond uh, the last couple of days? Got a couple of days off, much needed, I'm sure. Um, the way to respond, you know, um, you know, with guys being out, that hurt us a lot. You know, it's just, um, it's just paying paying attention to details and stuff. You know, just we got to keep folks on what we got to do, and that's all it really is. So, what's gone into your bigger and bigger role here throughout the season? Um, my role is just to, you know, just come in, play defense, uh, not really looking for hunting shots or whatever, you know, just coming in, playing defense, you know, giving the, giving the team energy. You know, coaches really throughout this entire season have, have gone back to how well you've practiced and the effort that you've put in in practice. How much of an emphasis was that for you to, to bring it in practice every single day? Um, well, first I had to learn, you know, I learned a lot to this point of the year. So, um, you know, just me learning, you know, Listening to teammates, coaches, and stuff like that helped me help me a lot. What has it been the biggest adjustment from high school to college, and especially the Big Ten? Who pace of the game? Definitely pace of the game. Uh, scouting, like you know, really watch your film. That's a that's a big emphasis, you know. So. You have knocked down some big shots, but another thing that coaches have said about you is that you've been able to really be um, beneficial on the defensive end and, and even spell Emmanuel Vandermill sometimes on the ball. A lot of times freshmen have trouble with that, defensively adjusting to that. So how have you been able to adjust so well on the defensive end? Um, well, I kind of had to, you know, force myself because, you know, like I said, you know, I come in, you know, uh, coach is really telling me, like, you know, um, you know, don't worry about shots. You know, we need you to come in, play some defense. So, you know, I just, my main, my, my focus is defense, defense. So, How have you been able to be a, a good defender? Like, what's gone into that? Is it something that you've studied? Is it something you've always been good at? Or is it natural? What goes into it? Um, I wasn't always good at it. Or, you know, maybe just now I'm actually, you know, like put in effort. You know, just, just making the effort, please. You know, that's really really was saying it'll just come naturally you know if you just put the effort into it so how much um how rewarding is it then that you can come in and and be someone that they can call on to come in on the defensive end i mean it's rewarding you know uh you see them you know playing playing a couple of minutes and you know uh how many minutes do i play or whatever but um you know they need me for defense so you know just t for them to recognize that uh they can throw me on the floor out there you know um they feel comfortable with me being out there. That's great. What's it been like being a freshman, a young guy on kind of an old team? You know, there's a lot of old players that have played a lot of basketball. So what's that been like for you? Um, learning experience, you know, uh, like Derek, Sam, Emmanuel, you know, all these older guys just really uh, talking to each other every day. Um, you know, they're telling me, you know, what's this, what's that? You know, just like I said, again, just learning. I'm just learning the process. You said that you don't come in and just hunt your shot down, but you definitely have knocked down some big time shots and some big time moments, especially from the three point line. How good does that feel, though, that they have the confidence in you? They want you to look for that shot when it's open. Um, well, they've been telling me that since the summer too. So um, you know, just I can find, I can hunt shots too. So um, uh, like again, yeah, I can hunt shots. So. How, uh, you know, not everybody's a knockdown three-point shooter. What, what's gone into that for you to be a guy that can knock shots down from the outside, from behind the arc at a high rate? Um, just consistency of work. Um, you know, just coming in before practice, after practice, uh, off days. You know, just getting the uh, getting amount of reps in. So that's helped me a lot. Does the game slow down for you? It seems like every time you step out on the court, does it, you get more and more comfortable? I get comfortable every time I step on the court more. So, um, like then, I just had to adjust to the pace of the game. But now I'm adjust, so I'm more comfortable. Take me back to your recruiting process and why it landed on Nebraska. Um, why the limit? You know, I just feel like, uh, you know, just I feel, I feel comfortable here. Um, you know, just what a uh, Wake Forest. I visited there. Um, you know, great school, but 
I just felt like when I visited here, I just felt like I was going to be more comfortable, and that's where my mindset was. Um, I knew both schools I can develop my game at, and I think I could do, develop more here. So what's it been like playing in front of these crowds here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena? Great. I, I, can't, even exp I can't even explain it. Um, a lot of a lot of amazing experience. Like uh, my favorite experience is before tip offs when we do that little the hand clap thing. I kind of join in on that too, so it's fun. Uh, what what do you need to do personally to continue with guys in and out of the lineup and and all of that? What do you need to continue to do to be able to provide um, a role for this team, a spark for this team off the bench, or whatever role they might might need you in? Um, I'll say just stay ready. Uh, you know, a lot of it. Earlier in the season, it was kind of like a, you know, just a mental thing because, you know, I'm new to all this stuff. So um, biggest thing for me is just staying, you know, mentally prepared. And, you know, that would help me a lot. How has it been, too, starting to watch more film? I'm sure that's, that's always seems to be an adjustment for guys, too, is, is learning how to watch film at this level, too. Has that been something that you've, you've learned a lot this season as well? Uh, definitely learned a lot because, uh, you know, you got to watch a lot of it, you know, to know your opponents, know, uh, know the scout. And, you know, uh, we, run, we, got a, we got a lot of uh, things we run on offense, too. So I'm starting to pick up uh, things on that, you know, from the point guard and other spots. So. And speaking of that, now that you have you guys started to dive in, I'm sure, on Ohio State, what have you seen out of them? And, and what's it going to take for you guys to get a win here inside PBA on Wednesday? Um, rebounding. Uh, that's the big emphasis. Uh, you know, the last six games, I think we lost three of them. Uh, all three, you know, we... We got crushed on the uh, the board, so that's the big emphasis. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate you, Marcus, for sitting down with us. Boy, he is a, a special young kid and bright, bright future and a lot of positive things that he brings to this program, both on and off the court. I th I've thought it's been fascinating. I've really watching both him and Wilhelm Breinbach. It seems like every time they get out onto the court that the game slows down for them a little bit. And, you know, a lot of times you see that click um you know going into the sophomore year but right. it seems like with every time especially every time that he's out on the court every more minutes that he gets it, it's slowing down for him and he's feeling more comfortable out there i think he realizes now he belongs yeah and once you realize you belong you play more relaxed and more so i want to see more of him when he comes out of the game i'm kind of like huh kind of want to see him in there more so that's a good thing i, I love to his his take on he was like Understanding that I, it doesn't start, I'm not trying to come in here and score 30 and do too much and I'm not hunting my shot that I'm, I'm waiting for it to come to me and there's other ways that I can contribute. Sometimes when you got freshmen that scored a lot of points because he scored a lot of points in high school. He was a big time scorer in high school. It, it's that adjustment of understanding that it's not on me. I, I don't have to score all the time. There's other things that I can do to get on the court and um, you know, just understanding that too and I think he's, he obviously is a very mature approach about it understanding that um, and not being disappointed that he's not scoring 10 15 double figures every game that he's he's letting it come to him and that's just going to continue to come more and more Jessica it's one thing I worry about with the portal is are these young freshmen in all sports are they willing to be patient because people are being replaced by seniors and juniors from other schools and they're willing to be patient and wait for it all to come together I think he's gonna stay here I think I think he is I think he's he's felt like he's grown and it's a good spot for him to continue to grow his game I think he really likes it here and yeah I mean I think he's gonna be a fun player to watch grow good 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 to hear from him hey folks Check out the Husker Extra mobile app from the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the app store for Husker Extra. Download it today. Also, I have time to tell you to buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. All right, that does it for our men's basketball show for the week. We have an open hour of Sports High League coming up on the other side. We'll hit all the headlines from the weekend and hear from Mike Schaefer from Huskers 24-7. Coming up on the other side. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built 
for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High Bee stores where right now kids can eat free. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics.
Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp. Our sports ticker brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Some college basketball sprinkled in today as we celebrate Martin Luther King Day in the Big Ten. A terrific game at East Lansing. Purdue survives a battle for Michigan State 64-63. It just went final in Minneapolis. Illinois beat the Gophers 78 to 60. NFL playoff action tonight as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers host the Dallas Cowboys. That game kicks off here in a few minutes and we'll wrap up the super wild card weekend in the NFL. Michigan head football coach Jim Harbaugh informed his school's president that he intends to return next season as the Wolverines head coach. Michigan under Harbaugh has won back-to-back Big Ten titles. Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud announced today that he is foregoing his remaining college eligibility to pursue a career in the NFL. Stroud was a Heisman finalist this past fall and is expected to be a top five pick. Tennis's first major of the year is underway from down under. The Australian Open began yesterday. Notable winners on day one included Rafael Nadal and Francis Tiafo on the men's side and Madison Keys and Coco Goff on the women's. Our sports ticker brought to you by the 1890 Initiative, helping Husker student athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for Sports Highly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Meyer, another three. This one's not good. The rebound and a great block out by Greasel. Vandermel's got the ball. Four to nothing run to start the second half. Wilcher drives the basketball, splits a double. What a play! Wilcher, what a fantabulous play! There's our play of the game. Wow, what a finish by C.J. Wilcher. And the first time tonight, the crowd is on their feet. A little 6-0 run to start the second half. Kaiser, left low block, guarded by Stewart. Knock away to steal for Kendall Moriarty. Here come the Huskers with 106 to go. In the second quarter, there it is. trailing by 11. Three ball, Lonnie Stewart all alone. You! Betcha! Off the steal and assist from Kendall Moriarty. Timeout, Kim Barzarico. And here come the Husker crowd. To Jazz Shelley. Throw it back. Jazz has a double team. Throws it deep left side. Callan Hake for three. You! Betcha! Reese will bring it across the timeline. How about a couple of quick baskets here? Down 10, deep left corner, Jamarcus Lawrence, three. Got it! Nothing but that swishola of CBA three for Jamarcus Lawrence. At top, Hybe has it. Huskers looking for a road win over a top five team. Hybe driving and scoring down the left lane line. That was classic Sam Hybe. Yeah, good pace by Sammy Nebraska answers. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are, Hour 2 Sports Highly on a Monday night. Hope you all had a fabulous weekend. Some terrific NFL playoff action, and hopefully there's a good one tonight between the Cowboys and the Buccaneers. Some really good college basketball games over the weekend. It was a fun weekend. It was a fun weekend. Lots of good football. And um, by the way, your Super Bowl pick is out. Yeah. And Andrews, we'll see. His, he he won the Cowboys. I still have one of my teams. I got Buffalo. Yeah. I had Buffalo, Minnesota. Yeah. We all had Buffalo, right? Yeah, I think so. No, I thought you had the Denver Broncos. Well, yes, I did. Denver. I did have Denver. A- Andrew confirmed. But, but who was my other team? I don't. I think you had Carolina. No, I did not. Yeah, and Andrew's. No, I, think I did you had not. Carolina. So yeah, one of my. That was a the the Vikings Giants was a heck of a game. It was one of the really good games. Yeah. Well, really, all three of the four were really really good. The the Forty ers pulled away from the Seahawks. Uh, late in that game, and I think tonight's will be pretty competitive too. I mean, there's a, a lot of cool storylines too. But Brock Purdy, I mean, Mr. Irrelevant is absolutely was Chuba there? Relevant. Did you see Chuba? I don't know that I saw I Chuba in the stands. I I don't know because they had uh, you know the whole team had a they went out and volunteered and, and did some things today, uh, all uh, multiple locations, and so I think um, most people are back and they start yeah, they weights are. tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. So they start. They had a big team meeting meal last night, catered by one of the restaurants here in Lincoln. And then, yeah, right. They started winter conditioning this week. Here so we go. and then they had the the team get together today, and so I, I would imagine he's back. I would imagine he. In, but he could have been in San Francisco Saturday for true. the game. Yeah. 
But I bet that's the last if he did go to that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Unless yeah. they make a run to the Super Bowl, I bet that's the last game. You know, I'm sure those guys are ready to get back to it. I mean, it's been a long time since the Iowa game. I mean, it's been so. And then they had voluntary workouts in the weight room. And I think a lot of guys did do stuff in December. But I'm sure they're all kind of glad to be back together. Yeah, and it's get a little bit of butterflies probably, too, because first time working out with Corey Campbell, I'm sure they've. I uh, met with him, and but you never know what to expect when you're going in with a new strength coach. And, uh, you know, he it all sets the tone. Like, tomorrow sets the tone for what a team does. And it's so important. The, everything that's built in the weight room in January before you hit the, the ground for, for spring football, I mean, culture, leaders, all kinds of, of – important elements that are built during this time and so it's you got to hit the ground running day number one so i'll be um curious to see but uh i was going to go back to um wh how, where did the new york giants come from how about that what a year they've been terrific. i mean they were terrible and then now all of a sudden they're making a run in the playoffs and now into the semifinals, they will play the Eagles next week, which should be an interesting game. And then the 49ers will get the winner of tonight's game. So good, good stuff in the NFL, always is. That's why the, the league just sets television ratings bonanzas year after year. I am probably, well, Bengals, I'm absolutely on their bandwagon. And then um, I also am probably going to be rooting for the Eagles as well. Cam Taylor Britt's name got mentioned a few times last night. He's done really well. What a good rookie year for him. He has, and especially coming off the injury and missing so much there. He missed some training camp, which is not easy to do, and then missed uh, the beginning of the season. But, boy, he is, he's a fighter, and he is, um, he, um, is not afraid to get in there and work and compete, and he's... Yeah, making the most of his opportunities, and good for him. I, I am big fan of, of Cam Taylor Britt was when he was here. He was so great to me. But then also, there's a couple guys on the offensive side of the ball that I worked with at Oklahoma that I'm fans of with Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan. So I, I am asked all the time. I mean, Ernie Ziegler, when he was in here the other day, asked me about who my NFL team. I'm for guys that I have covered and sure. work with. I mean, I don't really have a team. And so if there's a, especially if there's like a group of guys, and now that I've got both guys that I work with at Oklahoma and now at Nebraska. So that's where Philadelphia comes in with Cam Jurgens and those guys at, at Philly and then with the Eagle, oh, with the Bengals now. So there's a, a good group of both Nebraska and Oklahoma guys that I've worked with that I, I've got to pull for here in the playoffs. There was a Baker Mayfield sighting at the Creighton game Saturday. Well, so his wife is from, from Omaha. Omaha. Yeah. She went to school here. So, so he was, yeah. He was at the Creighton game on, on Saturday. There are some names coming back to Husker football, and we're going to talk more about this with Mike Schaefer later on, but I want your thoughts. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, who's been in the transfer portal for months, took his name out back in Lincoln. Xavier Betts, who left the team last spring, and I know I had several conversations with Nikki Joseph about Xavier during the fall. He stayed in contact with Xavier, telling him the door was open. Your thoughts about those two guys coming back into the fold? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with Xavier Betts. I mean, we've seen how electric of a playmaker that he can be, and it was really disappointing that it didn't work out. But I'm so glad that he's going to be getting another opportunity. And I know Mickey, you know, stayed with him and, and wanted to – still make sure that he was getting working on his degree and all of that. So I'm, I'm so glad that he's going to get another opportunity to come back. And I know that he was a guy that Casey Thompson, you know, singled out when they were, they throw a lot together, even when there's no mandatory being out there on the field together, you know, Casey will get out there with the wide receivers. All the quarterbacks will. And I know that Casey was a big fan of Xavier Betts and, and was a fan of his watching on film. And then when they got there and were just throwing routes and, and throwing balls together. And so I know that he'll be a guy that will be a big weapon that already kind of has that chemistry with Casey because mm -hmm. they did work together a little bit. And so, you know, he's a talent for sure. And so I'm glad that he's going to get another opportunity and, and hopefully he can hit the ground running and get right back two things it might be a, a little bit of an adjustment and then um, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda I, I got a chance to sit down with him he had a boy what a huge first game and then I think just maybe had some confidence issues and then just struggled but he, he, I mean you were a fan of his from back in the spring right yeah. and and thought that he could be a big weapon and, and we talk about speed and that's a lot of the, what this staff likes they, they like that speed and he's got some speed and so hopefully he'll be able to uh, get back in the fold and and I'm not sure what 
what went down and why things uh, unfolded the way that it, I know that he had a couple of times during games where dropped passes maybe weren't didn't do exactly what he was supposed to do and maybe had some confidence issues but hopefully he can get back in into the swing of things because I, I do think he's also a guy that can provide some good things out on a football field for a football team. Jessica with Xavier I kind of felt like it was a little bit of burnout for him I think he lost the love of the game for a while and I think sometimes you need to step away, push away, and see if it is important to you. And if you miss it, you know that it is. And I keep thinking of your interview last spring with Caitlin Ord, who came from Penn State, and she talked about, I need to rediscover the love of volleyball at that time. And she said Nebraska did that for her. And I think maybe that's what Xavier needed, was just some time away to see, is this important to me? Do I want to put all the effort and time into it? And I hope our audience realizes when you're a major college athlete, doesn't have to just be football, any sport, you dedicate a lot of your life for three or four years to that craft and going to school as well. There's a lot that goes with it. And if your heart isn't totally in it, it's hard to get up and go and do that day after day after day. So I think it's fine that a young man says, I need some time to rediscover who I am and if what's important in my life. And I just hope for Xavier's sake that that's, He's now back in a good place and with a whole, with a clean sheet here with a whole new staff in town. And sometimes, too, it, it takes, you know, walking away from it and realizing, like, oh man, I do miss I, it. You know, I, I miss it. I, I want to get back to it. And it just sometimes, yeah, it just is. And, and that's okay because it, it probably will make you a better football player for it and a better athlete for any anybody that's walked away from it and came back to it. But, yeah, I mean, I think probably give him a... <laughs> a Andrew sneezing over I, here. Well, I heard something commotion back there. But, yeah, just I, I think a perspective of walking away and getting back to it could, could definitely, definitely give him... A, a new spark, a new love, and, and all of that. So we'll see how it all unfolds. But I'm, I'm glad he's going to be able to get another opportunity because, you know, there there could have been a uh, where this staff said, you know, we don't we don't know you, we don't yeah. know, you know, it's not, we can't give you another opportunity. We don't have a spot for you, whatever. But I'm, I'm glad he's getting another opportunity. I'm glad he's going to be able to to pursue that dream, and, and we'll see how it all unfolds. You mentioned the team did a community activity. They were out at the food bank for Lincoln stocking some bags for people to come by to pick up some people who are food insecure in the community. I saw the softball team today was at Matt Talbot Kitchen, which is a daily kind of a, a soup kitchen for people to come in and get a hot meal on a day. And that adds on to what these athletes give back besides practice and all the things that they have to dedicate to their team and schoolwork and all that. They get out and they do things in the community. I think it's fantastic. And I'm telling you, what you see that's posted on social media isn't even a quarter of what these student athletes do. I mean, the softball team in particular, they do a lot of volunteering, a lot of giving back that isn't always documented, that isn't always put out on social media. And that's because that's not why they do it. They don't do right. it to get the, the glory. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that go into being a student athlete and some of it you see and a lot of it, most of it you don't. And so, yeah, that's... Um, it is. It's a lot. And you were just talking to, to Coach Hoiberg about you would think now, now's a time where you can just focus on being a basketball player. But no, a lot of them are in class, <laughs> are still taking semester classes right. or, or whatever. And so there's still a lot that you have to juggle and, and balance. And I know it would be really tough for me to do it. I don't think I could do it. By the way, you're going to lose your little easy access parking here in about seven days. What? Because all the students are coming back. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> the parking lot will be this, full again. I love the time of year where there's <laughs> They're gone. easy parking. Yeah, that goes away in a couple of days. Hey, folks, buckle up. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. All right, 402-413-2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. When we come back, we'll talk some football recruiting. Mike Schaefer of Huskers 24-7. He'll join us, get his take on a big day, big weekend for Husker football. That's next. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hanna Pham with Campus News. Nebraska has taken over leadership from Princeton University in coordinating the U.S. physics community at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. For its role, Nebraska has been awarded over $50 million in National Science Foundation grants. This cutting-edge work at the world's largest particle accelerator helps physicists uncover the origins and makeup of the universe. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So 
all about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light. You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Kick off the new year in a new Jeep SUV or Ram truck from Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Blair during the Start Something New sales event. Woodhouse is your trusted Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer for over 30 years with an extensive inventory and sales experts who will guide you to the vehicle fit for your lifestyle. Find your next vehicle online at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm Student Government President Jake Drake with Campus News. Nebraska has the most technically advanced buildings in the Big Ten, according to an annual review of universities across the country. Nebraska has also saved over $85 million over the past 17 years by making long-term investments in clean, reliable energy sources, cutting-edge automation, and collaborations across campus. Moriarty gets it, two seconds. One second, throws a flip up oh! and it goes in! It goes in! You betcha! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the miracle shot of all time! <laughs> Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the women's side takes on Purdue with pre-game coverage starting at 5.45 p.m. with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Here's Walker. They clear that left side for him. Backdoor cut, reverse layup, up and good, and one. Oh, what a find by Walker. Oh, what a finish by Bandamel. It was knocked to a, on the floor on his butt. And the Huskers are up by 271 to 69. Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the men's side take on Ohio State with pregame coverage beginning at 5 p.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. 
Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Delighted to be joined tonight by Mike Schaefer of Huskers 24-7. Lots to talk about on the Husker football recruiting front, the transfer portal. How much... How much time do you think has been added to your workload, Shay, for the last couple of years with this with this portal? Well, you know, it, it adds in some ways and then it subtracts in others because you're just simply not having to cover as much high school recruiting going on at this time because there's so much of an emphasis on on trying to get guys that, uh, you know, are in that portal that can maybe help you a little bit sooner than maybe some late senior film guys uh, or late evaluation people that you really like in terms of the high school stuff. So, And then the other thing with the, the transfer portal, you just don't get that many in-depth interviews. You're, you really don't have a lot of uh, super long stories or anything that you're going to be working on with it because these guys just don't talk as much generally. You know, every now and then you get an Elijah Judy who picks up the phone on the second ring every time without a problem. Uh, but those are those are few and far between when it comes to the transfer portal. You mentioned Elijah Judy, so let's start there. The Huskers today get another pick out of the SEC, and that's a Georgia player, MJ Sherman. What do, what can you tell us about this guy, and how big a get is this for Matt Rule and staff? Well, let's start with this. I mean, he's a former five-star player, or at least a five-star talent, depending on the recruiting service, um, and and a guy that it was expected to be, uh, you know, a presence off the edge. He's listed at six foot two, two hundred and fifty pounds, and so he's got Big Ten size. That's not necessarily a problem for him. It's whether he can still be explosive and you know really help Nebraska in terms of providing that pass rush or being able to set the edge, uh, which is the other big part in the Big Ten when you got to be one of those guys. And so Nebraska, I think losing Garrett Nelson, losing Oshawn Math is sort of in the market to try to find another potential outside linebacker, defensive end type that can help on the edge of the field, provide you a little bit of a pass rush, provide you some uh, some help there in terms of, of run defense as well. And he hasn't necessarily done it at a high level. But a lot of that has to do with being stuck behind some of the best defenders in the country, you know, on that Georgia depth chart. And he's looking for an opportunity. And Nebraska is going to present that to him. But he's going to have fine, you know, in Lincoln, too. He's going to have to beat out guys that have been waiting around Blaze Gunnarsson, Jamari Butler. I think there's some talent in that room. And, and if they're able to unlock it a little bit, there could be some guys that sort of emerged that people sort of forgot about that were in those 2020, 2021 recruiting classes. Shay, where's he at on the eligibility scale? Does he have two years left, three years? Where's he at on his clock? Well, you put me a bit on the spot here because I don't have it directly dialed up, but I believe he has three years for two seasons. Okay. I think that's right. I think he's a class of 2020 guy, which means he wouldn't have – no, he would have gotten the year of eligibility with COVID, so he'd only have two years in the system. So he might have three – years of eligibility left i'll have to double check on that you know we only have to get to 2025 before i don't have to add in the extra math huh. for the COVID eligibility so between me and all of the football coaches we're all just counting down the time there no doubt that thing has been so messy to follow in all the sports and, and it's hard to judge if a guy's a sophomore or junior all right I, i've had and i'm sure you have too so many husker fans very frustrated over the weekend with the decommitment and the flip to oklahoma What's your take on that, and should we get used to that kind of happening more often with the portal, or, or just your thoughts on all that situation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, unfortunate for Nebraska because it certainly felt like they found a guy there that, that would be their you know, offensive tackle for sure, but probably left tackle with, with that many career starts in Walter Rouse. It allows Teddy Prohaska to maybe take a little bit more time, get physically ready, mentally ready. You know, we, we like to think of him as a guy written in Sharpie, but he only has, I think, four or five career starts at the left tackle spot. He's had two injuries that have taken him out of being able to play that position for a full season. That's a lot of development time that Teddy Prohaska has lost. So I think getting Walter Rouse would sort of let you reset that a little bit, allow him to ease back in. Maybe he becomes your right tackle in the interim, uh, and then you go from there. But now, no Walter Rouse, so that kind of changes that plan. And as far as if this is a thing that fans need to, to be you know, wary of moving forward, that's 
that's difficult because every recruitment's going to be a little bit different. But we've seen this a couple times now where just because a guy says, you know, I'm going here out of the transfer portal, there's nothing binding. There's not, you know, it's not like it's National Signing Day where you sign that paper and, and anything else. I mean, Nebraska announced Walter Rouse and he still ends up at Oklahoma. And I, I think it was a situation where he was between, you know, two schools and picked one and slept on it, thought about it. You know, maybe Oklahoma got in the year. Maybe there's more NIL talk there. But ultimately, I think he chose the school that he wanted to go to. I mean, I, I think, you know, I was surprised when he ended up picking Nebraska. Uh, when he did, it might have just been a spur of the moment. That was a feel kind of thing. I thought that this was going to go a different way. And then I thought it was a pleasant win for Nebraska, only to kind of turn into a little bit of a cruel loss. I mean, we've seen it happen elsewhere. Illinois lost a guy to Auburn uh, the weekend that he was supposed to be moving in. He ends up announcing that he's going to be going to, to Auburn. So this is just, you know, yet another part of the silly season and, and yet another thing to uh, to just remind you that it's it's not done until it's done. Again, visiting Mike Schaefer, Huskers 24-7 here on Sports Honey. The wide receiver room just got busier. I mean, you got Isaiah Garcia Castaneda taking his name out of the portal. You've got Xavier Betts, the name that we thought was long gone, now resurfacing, apparently worked out with the team earlier today. Your thoughts about those two guys coming back into the fold? You know what? If you're in Nebraska and you're a new staff coming into this situation, you see a wide receiver room where Marcus Washington and, and Billy Kemp are your by far have the most experience. Uh, and, and, you know, you don't have a lot behind that of, of guys that have reps. And, you know, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda and, and Xavier Betts do. And, you know, both of those guys have explosive potential. Uh, other issues sort of popped up with, with Xavier Betts, and, and I think that's going to be a thing that has to be kind of proven. You know, he's going to have to earn his way back into this situation and, and to, to get the playing time and, and to be back in that conversation where we're talking about him as an explosive playmaker. I think he's going to have to earn that. But I think Matt Rule's shown at different stops, whether they be Baylor or Temple, he's willing to kind of to do that for the right guy. And, and sometimes it paid off for him. And so we'll see if Xavier Betts is in that category. And then, you know, Greg, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, uh, dummies like me were, were thinking he might be the best receiver. Nebraska got out of the transfer portal last year, and turns out Trey Palmer's pretty good, uh, and I'm just flat out wrong on that one. But there was there was a brief moment there where Isaiah Garcia Castaneda looked pretty good on that touchdown catch right to open the game in Ireland. And so I, I think he's a guy that uh, has enormous potential. Minnesota and Iowa State were very interested in him the first time he went into the portal. It was a big win when Nebraska got him. And so I think to get him back and he gets a fresh start, different coaching staff, gets to basically start over blank slate. I think that's good for him. He's healthy. He can go through the spring. And, and that's an outside wide receiver body that they went out and they got right there that has some experience. I mean, I, I think that's a good thing uh, for a wide receiver room that really it's in a very big prove-it mode outside of maybe Billy Kemp. Shafe, should fans be nervous, concerned that Nebraska appears to be well over the 85 limit, or do you think this is something that's going to flush itself out by between now and, say, June 1? Yeah, you know, when there's a coaching change, there's a lot of different – tools at the disposal of the new staff that, uh, you know, when they, they go to to have to set their scholarship limit and have to, to you know, get to that 85 number, the the conference and, and the NCAA, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, leeway there allowed for them to, to kind of do that. And so I think there's going to be some names that will be coming off the roster, uh, you know, well before we get to the next portal situation in May uh, and, and guys potentially moving on or medical red shirts or having, you know, essentially graduated, gotten their degree and, and have some eligibility left, but don't necessarily need to pursue it. I think you're going to see some of that. It wouldn't surprise me if there's some guys who end up, you know, just having their, their their football, uh, you know, career at Nebraska subsidized by NIL. I, that's been a thing in the past. Other programs have, have done that. And so we'll see if that's the route Nebraska goes. But they're they're not slowing down, Greg. I mean, they've, they've got a tight end coming in this weekend, a, a high school tight end out of the, the same school where where Bob Wager uh, was the head coach. They got a wide receiver that they went and saw in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and Demetrius Bell expected to come out this weekend. And, you know, they're, they're, they're not slowing down anytime soon. Defensive line out in California that they have interest in. So this is, you know, this is a Nebraska staff that, that is going to be very aggressive and they're going to push right up to that number and they're going to try to figure it all out as soon as they can after. So you expect more visitors in the next couple of weekends before the second signing day, huh? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, every indication is they aren't necessarily ready to flip the page to 2024 yet. They're going to continue to uh, to pursue some 2023 options. There's some guys out there that they think, you know, can help this program and some positions where they need to – they have some depth issues and, and they have to kind of fill in to try to get the numbers to line up right on the defensive line and they don't have a tight end yet uh in this class for 2023 and so and then you know Demetrius Bell's a wide receiver and we just got done talking about that wide receiver room so there's there's some areas where they they're still going to go to work they're still going to start putting in towards future classes I made another 2026 offer today uh, that's a freshman for those of you that don't want to do the math a high school <laughs> freshman out of Pennsylvania same high school as Vincent Carey Carol Jackson picked up an offer from Nebraska today. So they're, they're still working ahead, but they really want to finish strong with this 2023 group. And, you know, just the, the portal closes on January 18th. But what that really means is nobody can go into it after that time period. But Nebraska could theoretically still take players out of the portal all the way up until the last day to sign up for classes at UNL, which is January 30th. So that's essentially the rest of this month. So there still can be some activity in the portal as well. All right, I put you on the spot earlier about Sherman and, and number of years of eligibility. I'll have one more time I'm putting you on the spot tonight. That's okay. I like it. I like the challenge. Over, under, on number of Texans who sign in the 24 class. Oh, geez. Oh. Um, you know, they got connections down there. and They they want to go down there and, and really kind of spend some time and, and build, uh, you know, kind of a, a bit of a pipeline back up to Nebraska. I think – it's going to to help with the sort of hires that he's made and some of those connections that they have. Bob Wager, Garrett McGuire, uh, in specifics. I mean, you've had other guys that were down there that work for him at Baylor. I mean, so they they know that state really well. And um, okay, so let's do this. <laughs> let's set it. If you set the line, I'd be comfortable right around four to potentially five. I'm that might five. be on the low end. Yeah, I was second five. Yeah, the, the hard thing here is what is the number going to be for that class? I mean, the, the hardest part of these coaching transitions is you get somewhere and you take all these players, and then what you're doing is you're working against your future ability to take players unless some guys leave. And so there's, there's just going to be kind of a fluid roster situation. I don't know if they end up taking a full 25 next year, uh, but I, I do think they're going to have quite a few guys from Texas as part of their 2024 class, no doubt about it. Sure looks that way. Shape, great stuff as always. We appreciate it. Uh, glad to have you back on the program, and we'll be in touch. Yeah, this is fun. It was good to, to get back on here and looking forward to hearing from you again. Thanks, Greg. There he is, Mike Schaefer, 24-7 sports with a lowdown at all. Pretty busy and pretty active time right now for Husker football, and that roster certainly is moving. A lot of moving parts on that thing. He joined us on our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. All right, 402-413-2400. Call, text, Jessica rejoins the show next. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Moriarty gets it. Two seconds. One second. Throws a flip up oh! and it goes in! It goes in! You betcha! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the miracle shot of all time! Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the women's side takes on Purdue with pre-game coverage starting at 5.45 p.m. with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. 
Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer rest of CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Your story, it lives in River City where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. It's a Monday night sports highlight here on the Huskers Radio Network, 402-413-2400. Wow, busy time for Husker football recruiting. Matt Rural and the guys are all over the place. He was tweeted out something today. I think he was in Nashville seeing somebody. A couple of the coaches were up in the Omaha area. Uh, still a busy couple of weeks because there still is a signing day, the old traditional one coming up in the first part of February. Uh, so we'll be all over that in the coming weeks. We talked last late last week, Jessica, to Mark Manning, Husker wrestling coach. Boy, did they have a good weekend. Knocked off top of 20 Minnesota Friday night, top 10 Northwestern yesterday. Yeah, and I think too, uh, you expect the guys like Peyton Rob and Mikey Labriola to come out and, and win. But I think you're seeing some other guys really step up. And, and I know Coach Bating was really high on Brock, Party, but, Brock Hardy, but um, the lightweight guy. Uh, 
Sil- uh, Silas Aldred is, and then uh, Lenny Pinto. Lenny Pinto at 184 is doing some good well, things. Well, and he's a freshman, right? He's he's new into the lineup, and yep. th- there's just some guys that are, you're you're seeing again. I think just with every time out on the mat, kind of like what we were talking about with Jamarcus Lawrence earlier. But I, I think probably too they they were pretty excited to be back home, and it seemed pretty loud at times inside had, Devaney. Had over 3,000 there Friday night. I did not see an attendance yesterday for the Northwestern. Now they go to the the Lions Den. Friday night at Iowa, uh, so they'll take on undefeated Hawkeyes. They fill up Carver Hawkeye Arena for wrestling at Iowa City, so a big challenge for them. They have a great job by the Husker wrestling uh, team for doing well. Women's gym went back on the East Coast, had a good week, got their score up over 196. That's pretty impressive. Especially for the second weekend of the season. A lot of times it takes a while to get there, and um, saw some good individual scores as well, some 9-9s, nine nines and yeah, I think uh, they, they've... Um, Got some. I know Heather's really excited about this team, and they're back at home um, this Saturday. So should be another fun one. They were really excited about the crowd that came out and supported the last time. And this one coming up is the Pink Night, and then they're going to be signing autographs. So lots of fun things surrounding this meet coming up too. It's Maryland Saturday night, six o'clock at the Devaney Center. Should be a great time to be out there on Saturday night. Go see them. Uh, put up a couple pretty nice, impressive starts to their season. So women's gym underway. Women's basketball, tough game, really good Ohio State team. I, I, I didn't really realize this. I mentioned it on Thursday's show. I didn't realize they were undefeated. My goodness, that's a good basketball team Nebraska played over the weekend. And with some starters on the bench, their point guard and, and J.C. Sheldon, who's a really, She's a really, good, really player. good player. She yeah. wasn't out there. So, yeah, they've... Um, they, they're going to be dangerous if they get everybody healthy and to, to make a run. And I think they were pretty disappointed with how the season ended last year. And they're going to be a tough matchup for some teams. It just And, again, going back to what we were talking about last week, it's not like they have – it's it's almost like the Nebraska men's team in a way in, in that any given night could be somebody different that is leads the way for them in, in scoring. And so they got a lot of good pieces that are just – that play well together and – So, yeah, they're going to be a dangerous team for sure. The Husker women have the midweek game at Purdue Wednesday night and then a monster rematch with Maryland next Sunday, 1 o'clock at PBA. Folks, remember, Huskers went to College Park back in early December and knocked off Maryland. First time the Huskers have beaten the, the Terps since they joined the Big Ten Conference. So, you know, Maryland's going to be laying away. So, need a big crowd out there Sunday to root on the Husker women. Absolutely. Yep. Um, they they need to get things going again, and um, you know they love playing in front of that crowd. So get out there and um, support them, and hopefully they can get back to the winning ways. I think they just need to get over the hump a little bit. They're trying to figure some things out without Allison Widener, and so um, been a little bit of, of a challenge there. Jazz seems like she's in a slump to me, uh, and I don't know. I didn't I, even her body language Saturday. I thought against. In the game against Ohio State, she just didn't seem like she was a very confident player. And this is an all-conference player. I mean, she's a terrific basketball player. Yeah, I think, you know, again, I just, I think it's been, um, I think maybe we, there's there's so many good pieces, again, to this this Nebraska women's basketball team. But I think, um, you know, not having Allison Widener and they were playing off each other so well. And, you know, her role just kind of changed a little bit in and out with Sam, without Sam. Now, with Allison Widener, without Allison Widener. And so, but yeah, I think, yeah, hopefully if she could just get one, get over the hump again and get going again, it, will, it would just move mountains for her to, to get that confidence back again. But yeah, she just, does, she seems a little hesitant. And that's not a, she's not a hesitant no, basketball player at no. all. And, and she kind of seems a little hesitant. Did, did you notice that? That's what I, when I'm watching Saturday, and I, I was not there. Were you there? I was not there in the arena. She just looked like she was, not quite sure where she wanted to go. And I, I'm like, that's just not, that's not the person I usually watch playing. So, again, their midweek game on the road at Purdue, and then they come home to play Maryland on Sunday. The men are the reverse. They're home midweek with Ohio State and then at Penn State uh, for the weekend matchup. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. The Cowboys have scored against the Buccaneers in the last playoff game of the weekend, but they missed the extra point. Former Husker Brett Maher missed the PAT, so it's a 6 nothing Dallas lead. Tom Brady has the Bucks on the march. Late first quarter 
down in Tampa. All right, here we go. When we come back, our weekend winners. What's everybody have? We'll find out next. With seven Nebraska women's basketball Big Ten home games left on the schedule in January and February, Husker fans can still take advantage of the starting five-pack. Build your own custom-made five-game women's basketball mini ticket package for just $60. Get your tickets now at huskers.com slash tickets or call the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office at 1-800-8-BIG-RED. That's 1-800-8-BIG-RED. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Here's Walker. They clear that left side for him. Backdoor cut, reverse layup. Up and good, and one. Oh, what a find by Walker. Oh, what a finish by Vandemel, who was knocked to it on the floor on his butt. And the Huskers are up by 271 to 69. Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the men's side take on Ohio State with pregame coverage beginning at 5 p.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Folks, check out the Husker Extra mobile app for the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the app store for Husker Extra and download it today. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you Monday night. Final few minutes of this show. Clean up a few texts. Doug in Norfolk, I'm guessing you guys can't say much about the incoming transfer portals till classes start. Well, Doug, we can now. We're no longer uh, university employees. We're now employees of a company called Playfly, so we can do more of that. Thus, the Mike Schaefer appearance earlier on in the hour. And so we can talk about those guys and have been talking about some of those guys in recent weeks. Dennis says, just curious... On the new building for football, how's it coming along? Any available tours when it is done? I, my guess is they'll have some kind of an open house, but that's going to be June, maybe July before they have that. And I think they're pretty on schedule for this thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of now, for a while, we were saying how every time we'd go away for a couple of days and come back, it just seems like they're crazy amount of changes. They've almost about got the outside done. They'll start working on the inside here pretty quickly. And I uh, ran into Corey Campbell the other day on a recruiting weekend, and he said he got his plans in for the new weight room. And so, um, yeah, they'll start getting that thing ready to go. And I, I think it'll be, what, July, into July, maybe early August, when they'll start being able to, to move in there. And uh, But, yeah, it's going to come along pretty quickly. The, the building itself, though, is almost, I feel like, from the outside, almost all the structure structure is in place like it's not getting any bigger I guess right it's kind of the, the shell is done yes and so they'll start kind of building in now too I have seen some electrical trucks some plumbing trucks so they're starting to do some of that work inside now so Dennis it looks great if then I think Dennis is in Lincoln you ought to drive by it someday come on campus on a weekend 
But you know they're going to have the uh, the trophy room. They're going to have a really nice display that I I would imagine because that's part of the tour now that you yep. can come in and see that. So I would imagine it would be part of that. I don't know as far as getting to see everything within the facility if that will be part of the tour. But I got to imagine that once it opens up, fans will be able to come in and, and at least see that part of it for sure. Yeah, but it's coming along great. The the thought is get football in there in late June, early July before camp opens. And then some of the rest of the stuff may not be completely done until closer to when school starts in mid-August. But uh, like they, they, they know that they've got a TED deadline of making sure football is ready when camp opens in late July, early August. So they'll definitely get That'd get to that That would be a good point. question to ask Trev when he comes on about tours for the new sure. facility. Yeah. Our next athletic director show is next Wednesday night. Not this week, but next Wednesday night. So looking forward to that. All right, time for weekend winners. What's on your mind? You know what? I um, I got to get into a rhythm of doing this. How long has it been since we've done weekend winners or week winners? I kind of forgot, but um, I'm going to go with the Bengals and the 98-yard um, touchdown return. Wasn't that something? But just so many things have unfolded for the Bills and the Bengals, and after everything went down, and, and we saw Zach Taylor, how well he handled the situation with after the, the game got postponed, and then he visited the hospital. And so I'm just so glad for him and, and Cam Taylor-Britt. We talked about him earlier. But for them to find a way to win and, and to do it on a defensive touchdown with a 98-yard return, love seeing that. So I'm going to go with the Bengals. Cool. Andrew. My winner is going to be the entire NBA organization in college basketball athletics today, um, memorizing and talking about the MLK Day. They had shirts all today. They had um, great pregame ceremonies for it. So that's my big winner. Um, one of the games that I was watching was the Boston Celtics game, and my ex-Duke alum ended up with 51 points, so he is my winner for that. Are we going to go losers now? No, no. Losers are Fridays. Ooh. You just need a winner tonight. So you're good. You know, the NBA and, and college basketball, they've done a great job on Martin Luther they King did. Day. Uh, they have for a while. They've made it a really special day. They played all throughout the day, so you get to watch basketball a lot of people are off all today. day. Yeah, I, I love it. I think they, they always do such a great job. Yeah. Fox had a great little pregame segment on Martin Luther King before the Michigan State Purdue game, which that was a terrific basketball game as well. Uh, Art in Los Angeles has a winner. Uh, my weekend winner is Damar Hamlin, the power of prayer, go Big Red. Yeah, it was great to, to see a lot of shirts, and uh, it's been just remarkable to see the progress of Damar, the, the Buffalo Bill player who had a, basically had a heart, heart attack on the field a few weeks ago. So that's great. My weekend winner, Peyton Robb. We mentioned him earlier, the number one wrestler at 157 for the Oscars. He had two big matchups over the weekend, beat the 12th ranked Brayton Lee from Minnesota 2-0 Friday night and then beat number nine Trevor Chumley from Northwestern yesterday. Also a 2-0 battle. He is now 8-0 and in duels and again that I'm one ranked wrestler at 157. You talked to him about a month ago. He's having a great year. He really is and boy he's just on a mission you know. I just I think he's been through the part of the program and had a fantastic NCAA Nationals last year where he had to do the wrestlebacks had a crazy journey to end up being an All-American I just I think he's got he's just on this different mission and so I think he's he's putting a pretty pretty special season together can't wait to see how it completely unfolds do you hear the chortling no what Tom Brady just threw a pick in the end zone so oh. Andrew was chortling over here you know He's uh, he's got to keep trying to beat you in everything, um, I guess. So this is one of his picks is still left. He's cheering for the Cowboys. We got a Cowboys fan in here. Not, not a Cowboys fan. I can root for Mike McCarthy. He also graduated from school where I went to, so that's the only reason I kind of like Dallas. That's he's it. A, he's a Baker Wildcat. There's no doubt. Hey, buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Thanks, for everybody, for being a part of this one tonight. Tomorrow night, we're going to hear from some of the new guys in the recruiting staff for Husker football. This is exciting. We'll look forward to that tomorrow. Yeah, just I had a chance to sit down with them around signing day, and it's a, a fascinating, again, perspective as Coach Rule has put the staff together here. So we're going to get that perspective tomorrow. Fantastic. Have that all the day's headlines for you tomorrow night. Thanks to Andrew and all of you for listening. Have yourself a great night. Good night. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. 
You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Moriarty yeah, gets it. Two seconds. One second. Throws a flip up oh! and it goes in. It goes in. You betcha. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the miracle shot of all time. <laughs> Wednesday, Husker Hoops on the women's side takes on Purdue with pregame coverage starting at 5.45 p.m. with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the